This class is Memory of Jared Orchen. And today we're going to learn about a dispute when was Rosh Hashanah. Now, a little introduction. In, the time, in biblical times, even after biblical times, even after the destruction of the Second Temple, they used to decide the calendar not by the, not by the, not by a calendar, but by the moon. Every month, the Jewish calendar goes by the moon. Every month, two witnesses to come to Beidin and say, we saw a new moon. And then the Beidin, the Jewish court, used to announce that today is Rosh Chodesh. Today is the beginning. Rosh Chodesh means the end of the new month. Today is the first of the new month. Now, why we need two witnesses to come? Because the cycle of the moon is 29 and a half days. Then it's all, it, it could be that the month before could be a month of 30 days or only of 29 days. That if by the 30th day then we see a new moon, that means it's the first of the new month. It's not the last of the old month. If you saw two days ago a full moon, it was the 15th of the Jewish month. A Jewish month starts from zero moon to zero moon. When it's a full moon, it's exactly the middle of the month. Then when you see a sliver, a little bit of, the new, of a new moon, that's Rosh Chodesh. 30 days later, the moon disappears completely. And when you see a new moon again, that's again Rosh Chodesh. Now we go by a calendar, and sometimes it's not exactly, because it says to adjust, it's a whole thing. We're not going to. But in the biblical times, then let's say today is the 30th day of the month before. Then it could be it's a 30th day, and tomorrow is the first of the new month. Then we don't have to even to look, the, and look for a new moon. Yeah, moon, you saw the moon, you don't see moon, it's for sure a new month. The only question is the 30th day. Sometimes the the old month could be 30 days until the new moon comes out. Some days after 29 days, the new moon at the 30th day, the new moon will come out. That means last month was only a month of 29 days. The concept in the secular calendar of a month of 28 days is not real. There is no such thing as a month of 21 days. 28 days, I'm sorry. Because a cycle is 29 days and a little bit. There is a month of 31 days, I think, that was, uh, is August or the, what's, which yeah, month is Terry for? January, Terry March, one for, right? May, <laughs> Good. Right. It also cannot be, because there is no cycle of more than 29 and every, the most it could be Terry. The only question if it's 29 or Terry. That's why the Jewish months are almost every month, 29 Terry, 29 Terry, 29 Terry, goes by order. That whenever it's Terry days, that's Rosh Chodesh is two days. Hmm the terrier days, and the day, and first day of the new month. Whenever it's 29 days, Rosh Chodesh is only one day. Now, here was a, a discussion about two witnesses came to the bathing and saw, they said they saw the new moon. And some rabbis argue, agreed with it, accepted their testimony, others didn't because it didn't make sense, and so on. Now we'll start the Mishnah. We we'll learn Mishnah, then we we'll learn the Gemara. The Gemara is like analyzing the Mishnah. It once happened that two witnesses came and said, we saw the old moon in the morning in the east. And we saw the new moon that evening in the west. Okay, they saw, they said, on the 30th day in the morning, they saw the old moon in the east, in the, in the east, yeah? That means last month, they still, they still saw a little bit of last month, last month's moon. And in the evening, they already saw the new moon. That's what they came to the temp, to the, to the, to the Beidin. Okay. Yohanan ben Nuri said they are false witnesses. Okay, Rabbi Yohanan ben Nuri said it's impossible. Between the old moon and the new moon, there is usually, it takes 24 hours. After the old moon disappears, until they see the new moon, takes 24 hours. In two, 12 hours, they saw, they still saw the old moon, then they saw the new moon, all this goes together. Impossible, they're liars. They're fantasizing. Or they're lying 
purposely or they are dreaming or it's impossible. Okay. But when these witnesses came to Yavna, Rabbi Gamil accepted them as valid witnesses. Okay, Yavne was the place that the Sanhedrin at that time, after the destruction of the Second ta Temple, moved from Jerusalem to Yavne. And the head of the Jewish people, the Nasi, the leader, was in Yavne. His name was Alam Gamliel. Then when they came to Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, I don't know which city he lived, maybe in Jerusalem, maybe somewhere else, he didn't accept. They went to the, to the boss. In Yavne was the place they used to announce the new month. The head of the of the head of the Sanhedrin and the and the Nasi, they had to pronounce, they had to make the decision. If it's a new month, it, it depends on many things. It depends on if today, for example, Rosh Hashanah is coming up. Rosh Hashanah is the first of the Jewish month of Tishrei. Rosh Chodesh and Rosh Hashanah is the same day happens. Right? Then if Rosh Hashanah is on Monday, then ten days from Monday is Yom Kippur. If Rosh Hashanah is on Tuesday, the 10 days from Tuesday is Yom Kippur. And Sukkot has, it has a huge effect. And if the, day is 20, if the month is 29 days, people who get paid by the month, okay. one a day. If they get paid by the day, the, the employee made money. You understand what I'm saying? Then it has an effect on many, many levels. If the month is 29 days or 30 days, some people have an interest that the month should be 30 days, other people have an interest that the month should be only 29 days. Why would he go to the, the first rabbi anyway? Maybe because it was the local <laughs> place. Yeah. But he, couldn't the make, local he can't make a ruling anyway. He cannot make a ruling, but you know, maybe before they were to travel all the way to Yavne, he wanted to know if his a, if it's a rule, if his if if testimony is valid, it's more than anything. That even Rabbi Yochanan ben Uri said that they are liars. When they came to Yavne, Rabbi Gamliel accepted them. And because he accepted them, it was Rosh Hashanah. The argument was about not just a regular beginning of the new month. It was about Rosh Hashanah. Is Rosh Hashanah today or tomorrow? That means he's Yom Kippur to the 10 days from today, 10 days from tomorrow. It's, and Sukkot, it's, it's the, whole, the whole thing. Okay. On another occasion, two witnesses came and said, we saw the new moon in, the, in its time on the 30th day, but the night following the intercalary day, it was not visible. Okay, what happened is, they, let's say today's the 30th day. Two witnesses said, and said, we saw him today. We saw it, fine. The same night, after that, everybody came out to look for the new moon. It's gone. You don't see it. If you saw it already earlier, at night, you for sure should be able to see it. Well, only they were able to see it. Nobody else can see it. Okay. You want to continue? And Rabban Gamliel accepted them as valid witnesses. Again. Established the 30th day as Rosh Hodesh. As Rosh Hodesh. It was also a story about Rosh Hashanah. It was not just a regular beginning of the new month. It was the month, the most important month of the year. Go ahead. But Rabbi Dosa ben Horkonos said... They are false witnesses. How can they testify about a woman that she gave birth? Yet on the tomorrow, we see that her belly is between her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? No. no. They say, can anybody come and say she gave birth? And the next day we see her, she's pregnant. So the same thing is here. You said you saw the new moon. The baby was born. The new moon is here. Then you look at night. There's nothing there. It was a way of saying... How ridiculous is it to believe these two witnesses? Okay. Rabbi Yehoshua said to Rabbi Dosa, I see the correctness of your words, i.e., I agree with you that the witnesses are surely false, and that the outgoing month should therefore be extended to 30 days. Rabbi Yehoshua was the head of the Beidin of the Sanhedrin, second in command to Rabbi Gamliel. Did Rabbi Yehoshua listen to what... Uh, uh, Rabbi Dosa said, and he tells, you know what, you're right. It doesn't make sense. These witnesses are liars, and therefore this terrier day is, the, is still the, of the old month, and tomorrow is the first of the new month. It means tomorrow is Rosh Hashanah, and not today. It means 10 days from tomorrow is, is Yom Kippur. The Rabbi Gamliel said, today is Rosh Hashanah, 10 days from today is Yom Kippur. Rabbi Yeshua says, no, it doesn't make sense. Whereupon Rabbi Gamliel said the following message to Rabbi Yehoshua. I decree upon you that you shall come to me with your walking stick and your money on Yom Kippur as it falls according to your reckoning. Okay, on Yom Kippur, we cannot come with our walking sticks and not with our money, right? 
then because you're not allowed to violate the holiday. That Rabbi Gamliel realized that Rabbi Yeshua is going to have his own Yom Kippur. He'll go home to his city. I think he was living in Lud or something like this, or in Pekin. I think he was living in Pekin at one point. There's all this caution where it's Pekin. Pekin is in the north. Pekin is in the in the center of Israel. Whatever it is, he will go in his shul. He will have Yom Kippur a day later. He will not even mind to fast two days. Some people do that. But is Yom Kippur? Is his Yom Kippur? Then what, what is Yab Ben Gamliel afraid? Yab Ben Gamliel is afraid will be, will be two communities, two, 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 two Torahs. Can you imagine? In Bichud Yom Kippur is, is Wednesday, in Solon it's Thursday. It will be a disaster. It, it will be a, the destruction of the Jewish people. That Yab Ben Gamliel sends him a message, I'm the boss here, I'm the Nasi, and as the, pre, the leader of the Jewish people, I order you that a new Yom Kippur you should come to me on your donkey with your staff and with your money. You should sh uh, uh, show everyone that you are not ex you are not making your own yom keeper, That you are living. You are going by my by my ruling. But just a question now. Yeah. It, it requires the majority of. To, but we we only see this as being an argument. And this is a classic argument between. Um, Obviously, if Rabbi Gamliel announced that in the Beit Din, it, okay. was, it, was, it, was, it was accepted. accepted. Okay. Then Rabbi Yeshua comes and says, no, I, don't, I disagree. Right. Then the Nazi had the power to decide when Rosh Chodesh is. That's the bottom line. It was his world. So Rabbi Yehoshua was in the majority against Eliezer, and now he's in the minority. Could be. If it doesn't mean, that's a good, interesting point. And therefore, he gave in. <laughs> or with Rabbi, yeah, I yeah. mean... If you, you're right, if you play by the rules, you play by the rules. Good point. Rabbi Akiva went and found Rabbi Yehoshua distraught over his predicament. You see, Rabbi, Rabbi, Akiva, Rabbi Akiva was a young student at that time. He saw how Rabbi Yehoshua is forced to violate his Yom Kippur. It couldn't be anything worse to a human being, a rabbi, that is convinced that Yom Kippur is this is specific certain day, and somebody else tells him, no, you will violate your own Yom Kippur. Not only I don't listen to you, I'll force you to, to listen to me. Then for sure Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Yosho was very disturbed and Rabbi Akiva came to fix that situation. Rabbi Akiva was brilliant and he was a man who loved peace and therefore he wanted to make peace between Rabbi Gamliel and Rabbi Yosho. Then he came up with a brilliant, brilliant concept. Go ahead. Uh, Rabbi uh, uh, Kiva said to Rabbi Yeshua, I can demonstrate that whatever Rabbi Gamal did, even a mistake is done and is le uh, legally uh, definitive. He told him, I can show you and prove you that even Rabbi Gamal made a mistake, it's kosher. Then you should follow Rabban Gamliel's decision and don't feel bad about it. What he told them? For it is stated, these are the festivals of Hashem, holy convocations, that you shall declare uh, them. And you should declare them. The verse says in the Torah, Ele moyade Hashem, these are the festivals of God, that you will declare them. You will call them into holidays. You will decide when is the holiday, basically. What he says here, go ahead. This is to say whether you declare them in their correct time or not in their correct time. I, Hashem, have no festivals other than these. He says something amazing. He says, God gave up the, the calendar to the Jewish people. Shabbat is every seven days. It's not controlled by us. But when is the holiday? God said the bathing should decide when is Rosh Chodesh. When is the first of the month? If they decide when is the first of the month, you know, Pesach is the 15th of the month. If you decide on the first days, you automatically decide on the 15th days. Then basically, God gave the Jewish people the power to decide when the Jewish holidays are. We are in a marriage with God, in a regular home. Who is in charge of the social calendar? The wife. Right? The same thing with the marriage between God and the Jewish people. God gave the calendar to his wife, to the Jewish people. You decide when the holiday sound. And whenever you decide, it's okay with me. 
obviously within the law, they cannot start on the day 32 to decide that's a Rosh Chodesh, or, or not like they did in the secular calendar, a month of 28 days, a month of 31 days. This doesn't work, but within the 29th day, God left it up to the rabbis. And whatever they decide is good enough for them. Uh, the Medish puts it in a better way, that before Rosh Hashanah, God is asking the heavenly court, go find out downstairs, when they decide it is Rosh Hashanah, and then I will sit on the chair of judgment. You understand? It means to say it's up to us. Whenever, whenever Rabbi Gamliel decides it's Rosh Hashanah, Hashem will make it Rosh Hashanah. Whenever, whenever Rabbi Gamliel decides it's Yom Kippur, it's Yom Kippur. God doesn't argue. As long as we're in the frame of the 29th period, as I mentioned. That's because he took it from the verse. He says it's written that you will call it the holidays. You call the shots. Hypothetically, what would happen if Rabbi Gamliel said, hey, the 32nd day is Rosh Hodesh? No, it's not, it's not Rosh But even Rabbi Gamliel has to play within the rules. God empowered them to follow by the rules. Deuteronomy 17 says, listen to the written. Listen to the rabbis or listen to the authorities at the time. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but, but, but it doesn't mean that, that, that everything the authorities say is right. Listen to the authorities of your time, but it doesn't mean that. But sometimes they're wrong, sometimes they even do not say us to bring a, a, an offering, right? An atonement, a sin offering. Because mm-hmm. even uh, everybody can make a mistake. That what, it will not be Rosh Hashanah. You might, you might have to listen to him, but Rosh Hashanah, it's not. It's within the. But, Within these two days, even deliberately, that's what will come in a minute to say that even deliberately, it still be the holiday. Go ahead. Rabbi Yeshua then came to Rabbi uh, Joseph Ben um, Orkinas. Orkinas, who said to him, if we are going to reconsider the decision of uh, Rabbi Gamel's Beidin, then we will have to reconsider the decisions of every each and every Beidin. He said if he didn't ex- don't accept Rabbi Gamel's Beidin, because they think they made a mistake. Maybe a generation ago they also made a mistake. And maybe two generations ago when they made a ruling about another thing, they also made a mistake, then there's no end. This is the Beidin, as you quoted from Deuteronomy. This is it, you go by this. Okay. That arose from the days of uh, Moses until now. I will have every Beidin from Moses until now, we'll have to check on them. Maybe it's wrong. Go ahead. Okay. Is it stated? This oh. uh, we should uh, show. Yes, it is oh, stated, okay. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. before that, the one page, bef- one line before that. Okay, um, as, as it is, mm-hmm. th- this we surely cannot do, as it is stated, <clears throat> and there went up Moses and Aaron, Nadav, Avihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. It's written <clears throat> about Mount Sinai, the two went up, Moses and Aaron, Another one of you and the 70 elders. Right? Go ahead, continue. Now, now, why were the names of the 70 elders not expressly mentioned? The Torah says in the 70 elders. I will not say who they are. I wouldn't mind to know what was the name. I mean, we, have, we know the name of the 12, the 12 uh, spies. We know names of so many, many people in the Bible. I know the 70 elders, important people. Nice guys, they had long beards, they were big scholars, why not? Then he says, but only to teach you, to teach us. That every three judges that arose as a a baiting over Israel are like the court of Moses with regard to authority. Purposely the Torah did not write the names because it doesn't make a difference to the art. If they were accepted as a court, it's a court, it's a court. Because if you would know the names, you'll say, oh, if my rabbi would be like Moses, that would be nice. You would compare, you're comparing our Beidin to the Beidin in the time of Moses, you know, they were there, this and this and this. They say, we don't know who they are. It was a Beidin there, it's a Beidin now, this is it. I'm, by this I'm, you just, go. I'm just not quite sure that when you, all these people went up. This is out of Mount Sinai, right? Yes, yes. Why? I don't remember they, them all going up on Sunday. If you look in the Chumash, they'll go up. They go to different yeah, levels. Part yes. way up, so. part it's in the end of Parshat Mishpatim. It's yeah. not in Parshat Jethro. But it's not all the way. They don't go as high as Moshe and Aaron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. At one point, they went up. Okay. 
then uh, go go ahead. Accepting the arguments of Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Dosa, Rabbi Yahushua took in hand his walking stick and his money and traveled to Yavna to Rabban Gamliel. And, he, Rabbi, and Rabbi, accepting the argument that that uh, that, that, that was uh, the the idea that every Beidin is like Beidin of Moses. And if they made a decision, even if they made the wrong decision, it's still the right decision. Rabbi Yeshua took his money and took his, his, wall, his wallet and he took his staff and his Yom Kippur and he went to Yavna. How much strength it takes to do such a thing? For a very religious man, that Yom, it's not to be shvat, you understand? It's not about a minor holiday like Tu Bishvat or even Lag Baumer, Hanukkah. It's Yom Kippur. It's the day of atonement. It's the day of fasting. It's the holiest day of the year. Rabbi Yeshua was 100% sure that it's impossible. Today is the 10th of the month. In Hashem, it's written in the Torah. On the 10th of the seventh month, you should, you should, you should call it a holiday of, of, of atonement. Yema Kippurim. Be'asir in the 10th of the month. And here, because of Rabbi Akiva's convincing logic, he says, you're right. It shows also that Rabbi Yeshua was a man of peace. He didn't try to make trouble. And he took his money and he went to, to Rabbi Gamliel, to Yavna. From Lud, he went to Yavna. Go ahead, continue. On the day that Yom Kippur fell according to his, Rabbi Yehoshua's reckoning, uh, Rabbi Gamliel thereupon arose and kissed Rabbi Yehoshua on his head and said to him, Come in peace, my master and my disciple, my master in wisdom and my disciple in that you accepted my words. When he saw him, when Rabbi Gamliel saw Rabbi Yehoshua coming, he kissed him, he told him, You are my disciple. In this, that you listen to me, but you are my rabbi. You taught me how to behave. That's what he really taught him. Hmm. What a lesson! Lessons. A rabbi is not a teacher. Is not only teaches you information. The true rabbi is a living example. He says, in an example, you are my you are my teacher. That's what you are. That's the Mishnah. That this could almost be a crisis, and Rabbi Akira saved the day. Simple as that, he saved the day. Now, we will skip the first paragraph because it's a little complicated. We'll go to the same page, the next, the, on, the, on the right side. The Gemara records an incident. You see, the Mishnah is more the ruling, more the, the raw material. The Gemara usually analyzes what's written in the Mishnah. That's easier here, and therefore we chose this. You want to read? Want to read? <clears throat> Rabbi Akiva once saw the old moon standing visible in the sky on the morning of the 29th of the month. Okay, Rabbi Akiva saw the old moon, the moon of last month, on the 29th day. But it wasn't just on the a regular 29th day of the month. It was the 29th day of Elul, the month before Rosh Hashanah. And tomorrow has to be Rosh Hashanah because they wanted to pronounce the Terrier day as the first of the new month, the first of, of Tishrei. It should be Rosh Hashanah. They didn't want to wait 30 full days. They wanted the moon should disappear faster. The body did something very interesting. Go ahead. He took a clod of earth and threw it at the moon in a gesture of rebuke. And he said to the moon, Tonight we have to sanctify you, and you are standing here. Go conceal yourself. He basically talked to the moon, What are you doing here? We need, we need tomorrow to have a new moon. Why they needed tomorrow to have a new moon? Why was it so important to them that Rosh Hashanah should be a day earlier? So Rosh Hashanah will be a day later. Because if Rosh Hashanah is a day later, Yom mm -hmm. Kippur is a day later. What's so bad about Yom Kippur being a day later? Can we fall on Shabbos? Yom Kippur can be on Shabbat. No, no, but they want to give us up with Shabbos? No. 
that could happen a day before Shabbat or a day after Shabbat. Think about it. We never ever Yom Kippur on Friday or on Sunday. Okay. You ever remember Yom Kippur on Friday or on Sunday? Never. You ever had a Yom Kippur if Saturday night? I mean, Kol Nidre Saturday night? The meal before Yom Kippur on Saturday night? Never. You ever had a, you ever broke fast on a Friday night dinner? Never. It's never Yom Kippur. It doesn't come right before Shabbat or after Shabbat. It's purposely. Because in the olden days, if they have to, let's say Yom Kippur is Saturday night, who's going, how are they going to prepare food on Shabbat? You're not allowed to cook on Shabbat. Then you cannot have Shabbos and then Yom Kippur. It will be very complicated. The same thing the opposite. Therefore, the rabbis is to make all manipulation in the world to make sure Yom Kippur doesn't happen the day before Shabbat or the day after Shabbat. And that's what he tells them, well, I need this movie, I cannot see you, get out of here. <laughs> we need Yom Kippur to be in Rosh Hashanah to be tomorrow, we can't wait another day, we'll be, we'll be too out for all the Jews. Another reason is, because at that time, two days of not walking was very, very hard on the people. And if it's happened on Shabbat, it's good. But if it's Friday and Shabbos, two days, and think about farmers, they have to milk the cows and do the, all these things. Two days not to do these things would be an impossible task. That's why they made sure they had a special effort to make sure that holidays and Shabbat don't touch to each other. Yom Kippur is even harder than all of them. I mean, today's calendar, sometimes you have three days. You have uh, Thursday, Friday, Yontif, and then Shabbat. Or, but uh, but uh, at that time, they were, they were making an effort that shouldn't happen. Okay, that's what Rabbi has said. Rabbi then said to Rabbi Chia. Rabbi, our famous Rabbi, did you learn about them lately? Mm-hmm. Rabbi, our famous, famous uh, beloved Rabbi, go ahead. Go to Ein Tav and sanctify the month. Go to Ein Tav and sanctify the month there. Why go to Ein Tav? Why not here? There is two explanations. One explanation says, in Ein Tav, you, they, the people there didn't see the, the old moon. And if you announce the new moon, they will take it. Here they'll stun you. Tell you, what do you mean there is a new moon? We just saw the new moon, the old moon. That's one explanation. The other explanation is, the Romans, they were living in the time of the Romans. The Romans were trying to eradicate Judaism from the Jewish people. It was like communism. (coughs) The main three agendas, what were the three things they wanted to erase? It was circumcision. Very good, what else? Reading the Torah. Reading the Torah, Shabbat in general, and holidays. How you eradicate holidays? You not you don't allow to announce the new moon. That he says, here we cannot announce the new moon. Go to Ein Tav and make an announcement and send me a message. I know that you Bedin announced it and it's done. Then I can, we can spread it all over. What's the message? What should be the code? The code that we know that you did it? And send me a signal that you have accomplished the task. David, King of Israel, lives and endures. Ah, that turn the page. Turn the page back for a second, and let's read this line in Hebrew. The last line on this page: David, Melech Israel, Chai v'Kayam. You see it? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. No, in the middle. Yeah. David, Melech Israel. David, Melech. It's coming from here, my friend. This is the source of it. Rabbi used it as a sign. Here is the code. If I know that you send with me somebody, you send him, you take a boy, tell him, go around to Rabbi and just tell him this line. David, Melech, Israel, he will know already. The boy arrives, said, David, Melech, Israel, you know, oh, it's Rosh Hashanah today. Then Rabbi chose this line to be a slogan. Why? Because this slogan says everything about the Jewish people. The David, David means the Jewish people. The Jewish people will survive, will live forever. They live and endure forever. David, Melech Israel, David, the king of Israel, Chai, is alive, a Kayam, and he exists forever, he endures forever. And he says, this will be the sign. It means to say, the Romans, the Shmomans, we will sanctify the new month, we will have Rosh Hashanah, and we'll have another Rosh Hashanah, and another Rosh Hashanah. No matter what the Romans say, we are still here. They are gone, we are still here. 
Isn't it also a messianic call uh, into the Romans? Wouldn't they have taken offense to that? What? For David, David Malik Israel, uh, David lives. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think even in this direction, but why should they take it? Oh, because they will. He wanted to say, he wanted a, a, a code that they don't understand, not a uh -huh. code that they do understand. But I don't believe that he would say something that they can understand and can get uh, offense by it. But I hear what you said. So David lives on that's a messianic call and that's a threat, direct threat to Rome. Oh, then he shouldn't say it. Yeah, although it's, it's kind of coded, I guess. It's coded. Sense. It's not like you don't understand what it means. Mm -hmm. Somebody tells you, David, if, if you, if you wouldn't understand, if you don't understand what's behind it, it's a nice song. No. <laughs> and actually, today when we sanctify the new moon, there is a tradition, there's a mitzvah to, it's called Kiddush Levana. Once a month, around a few days after Rosh Chodesh, when we see like a, like the moon looks like a banana, mm -hmm. we go out and we say a special prayer for the new moon. Every month. Why do you have to wait a couple of days? You have to wait, according to Kabbalah, seven days, according to the Allah, it's only three days, or what Kabbalah goes by seven days. Between the seventh day until it's a full moon, until the 15th day, you have the seven days to every night. You can go out in your own house, you open the prayer book, and you say this prayer. And you, you basically, the Jewish people are compared to the moon. Why the Jewish calendar goes by the moon? We count by the moon because we are like the moon. What means we are like the moon? First moon, just like the moon, you think it disappears. It's gone. You go out one night, there is no moon. Just a matter of time, give it, give it a chance, come back. The Jewish people, there were moment in Jewish history, there was no moon, gone. The Jewish people, everybody says, that's over, we'll be. Hitler thought he's done with us. <laughs> God laughs at them, give it a few days, they'll come out from a different place, you'll see them. And also in Jewish, in, in our own, and sometimes we are a full moon, thank God we are now in a stage that the Jewish people are abiding in a full moon. It's amazing to be Jewish today. The whole world is fascinating with, with Judaism, with the Jewish people. Even in the Pew study, they came out that 90% of the Jewish people are proud to be Jewish. That's an amazing achievement. It wasn't like this 100 years ago or 200 years ago. But everybody's proud to be Jewish, no. There's other problems, but this issue, then what I mean to say is, that's one reason why we are compared to the moon. The other reason why we are compared to the moon like the moon does not have your own light. The moon is just a reflection of the sun. So too the Jewish people are a reflection of God to the world. We are, when a person looks on the Jewish people, he should see godliness. What is, the, what is our niche? You know, every nation, every business has a niche, right? Ice cream has a niche. Everyone has a niche. If you don't have a niche, even in every profession, you better have a niche. If not, you're in trouble. What's the, what, what are we contributing to the world? We have the best, the tallest basketball players. We have the top. Every time you have to borrow from a few places, a few from here, a few from there. Look in Israel, when they have, when they have a team, very few Israelis, very few Jewish kids there. What are we bringing to the world? We are a reflection of God. We are the moral voice of the world. And that's our job. That's why we go by the moon. That's why we have the tradition every month to go out and pray that as the moon is being renewed, so the Jewish people should be renewed. And we say as much as God, nobody can touch the moon, so nobody will touch the Jewish people. You can go to the moon and, and touch her. But in your ear, you cannot touch the moon, right? <laughs> and we cannot touch the moon, then nobody can touch us. Then we say in this prayer, we say, the line, David, Melech, Israel, Chai Kayam three times. Then we say that another very good line, Simen Tov, Mazel Tov, Yeilan, Ulchol, Israel, Amen, is in this prayer. It's from there. The song Simen Tov, it's another line that comes, that's in this prayer from the, from the, from the sanctifying the moon. I wish you could do it, but usually at night we don't have too many people here. But sometimes Saturday night we do it. After, when you have a dollar and this, and a few people stay, or we do Kiddush Levon. It's a prayer, it's three pages, not a lot, very short prayer, but a very meaningful prayer. But you can do it on your own, you don't have to have a minion, you can do it, everyone can do it in his own house. Okay.
Let's continue with the Gemara says. Okay. The rabbis taught in a Barisa. One time the skies became overcast, and a likeness of the new moon was visible on the 29th of the month. And the people thought to say that Rosh Chodesh would certainly be declared that day. And Beit Din indeed sought to sanctify it then. It was the 29th day of the month. They already saw the new moon. And they wanted to make Rosh Chodesh on the 29th day. That cannot happen. Could be on the 30th day Rosh Chodesh, but on the 29th day, it's too early. But they saw more. Okay. Ravon Gamliel said to them, Thus have I received a tradition from the house of my father's father. The rebirth of the moon is not less than 29 and a half days, two-thirds of an hour, and 23 halachim from the previous one. He said it must be 29 and a half days. And if it didn't pass 29 and a half days, you are elus hallucinating. You did not see the moon. Whatever you see, you can see whatever you want. But from the last moon, they know when they saw the last moon, the moon before, had to go through 29 and a half days. And I two a quarter of an hour, and exactly, I didn't go through so much. Then obviously it's not Rosh Chodesh today. No matter what you saw. Mm -hmm. By the way, that's the Rabban Gamliel accepted the, there's all explanation why Rabban Gamliel accepted the witnesses that Rabbi Yeshua didn't. Because Rabbi Gamliel used to add his calculations. And he only needed the witnesses to come and see that they say that they saw it physically. But he knew by his calculations when is the new moon. That when they came, he said, I know it's true because of my calculations. Now they came and said it, I believe them. It wasn't just the witnesses, you understand? It was the witnesses together with his calculations. But the same thing is God. Well, but how did the Beit Din then accept that? Because, I mean, did, did, did Rabbi Gamel... For say, example, um, we, 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 the first story is, they said we saw the old moon in the morning and the new moon in the evening, right? Right that he said what they saw the old moon, they were dreaming. But they saw the new moon is real. Because according to my calculations, the new moon has to be there in the evening. You understand? That they took their, their testimony in a half. Said what, they, what they said they saw in the morning, disregarded. They said they saw nothing. They were hallucinating. In the evening, yes, according to our calculations, it makes sense. You understand what happened here? But the Beit Din accepted Gimel's um, calculations. You're right. No, they accepted the witnesses based on the calculation. How come? Because uh, Rabbi Yeshua. Rabbi Yeshua just thing. took the two witnesses. He said that what they say doesn't make sense. They saw one in the morning, or saw in the evening. But it's impossible. Was, but he was second uh, uh, beneath uh, Gemara. I think that in this in this thing it was all up to the to the to the Nazi, to the leader of the Jewish people. He made the decision. He called the shots. So. I don't know how they could figure twenty nine and a half back then. They didn't have any uh, clocks, did they? Really, really. I don't know. They had, should they had that. Many ways of doing this, but uh, and sun clocks. Down. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There, there are many, many ways to calculate. They were very sure. Very time, sophisticated. time is not a new thing. Oh, I should remember the readers of the last time. Well, there's always been shadows, and people have tracked them for millennia. Then on this day, that this guy, that the whole community saw the moon. He says it's not a new moon. Uh, guys, move on with life. What he did to make a point that it's not Rosh Chodesh. And on that day, the mother of Ben Zaza died. And Rabban Gamaliel eulogized, eulogized her a great eulogy, not because she was worthy of this great honor being eulogized by the Nazi, but in order that the people should know that Beit Din had not sanctified the month on that day. Okay, what is happening here? Jewish law says Rosh Chodesh is a happy day. It's like from the between the holidays, it's a minor holiday, but it's a holiday. It's not a regular day. Even you go to work and everything, but it's not a regular day. The best way to know it is like this. Every Monday and Thursday we read from the Torah. How many aliyahs we have? Three. Three. And Rosh Chodesh, we add one aliyah, four. It's a whole year day. We call up four people to the Torah. And Yom Tev, we call up five people to the Torah. And Yom Kippur, we call up six people to the Torah. And on Shabbat, we call up seven people to the Torah. That's how you know where you're standing in the world. Then Rosh Chodesh is a happy day. On a happy day, you're not allowed to mourn. Or you have to reduce the mourning. What happens if there is a funeral on that day? Then you're not allowed to make a eulogy. Okay. Okay. The today's 
The rabbi said they do a eulogy, it's not a eulogy, it's an opportunity, you have a captured audience who can hear a Jewish word about God and about Judaism, you, they will not come to Marobek. They are here, you better cash on it, talk to them about God a little bit, about wake them up about something meaningful. But in a religious community, there will be no eulogies on Rosh Chodesh whatsoever, not only death. <coughs> Even the Ken Malei Rachamim that we say on funerals, they will not say it. They say different prayers because, because it's a day of celebration. Rabbi Gamliel wanted to make a point that the 29 days not Rosh Chodesh and was somebody passed away that it was a funeral. He stood up and he went on and on and on and on. Not because she was so important that he needed Rabbi Gamliel to give the speech, to give the eulogy. He wanted to make a point to everybody today is not Rosh Chodesh. And because everybody in the community, Jewish community knew that a day there is religious, for sure it's not Rosh Hodesh. No, regular people don't understand what's going on, but they saw a funeral, Rabbi Gamliel gave a it's not Rosh Hodesh. That's for sure. That's clear. That everybody understands. That, uh, that how much he wanted to make a point, then it can be only the Terrier day or the Terrier first day. Let's put it very clear. Ben could be Rosh Hodesh. It's only one, one day earlier or later, but not, not more than that. The Terry first day means the beginning of the new month. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, this could be two days then. Then, that's another thing, but let's not confuse. Yes. Oh. The Mishnah states. The Mishnah stated, he went and found him, Rabbi Akiva distraught. The Gemara inquires. In top of the page. They inquired, you. who was distraught? Was it Rabbi Akiva or was distraught of Rabbi Yeshua, who was distraught. The Gemara resolves this uncertainty. Come learn a proof that it was Rabbi Yeshua who was troubled, for it was taught in the following Barasa. Rabbi Akiva went and found Rabbi Yeshua while he was distraught. He said to him, my teacher, for what reason are you distraught? He told them, Rabbi, why are you so upset? Why are you so upset? That what he told them, Rabbi Akiva asked Rabbi Yeshua that was ordered to go with his staff and with his money to on his Yom Kippur, why is he distraught? That what he told them? He said to him, Akiva. Akiva, it would be more acceptable for him to become bedridden for 12 months rather than have his decree issued against him. He said, I, he said he better be sick for 12 months than offer this decree. Then, then he, should be, he, should be, he should be forced to violate his own Yom Kippur. That's what he said. That's Rabbi Yeshua. That's how upset Rabbi Yeshua was. He said him, because he didn't want to speak on himself. A person doesn't speak heal on himself. But that's what he, what he meant. He says he better suffer for 12 months than, 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 than violate his own Yom Kippur. That's how, you, how, much, how, that's how, how upset he was about the situation. That Akiva, Rabbi Akiva, said to him, I'm sorry, go ahead. My teacher, permit me to tell you one thing that you have taught me. Permit me to teach you one thing that you have taught me. See, Rabbi Akiva didn't come and say even that it was his brilliant idea. As Rabbi, you taught me something. Rabbi Yeshua said to him, speak. Akiva said to him, indeed it states in the scriptures with regard to the designation of the festivals, you, 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 three, three times. times. What does this mean? There is three verses in the book of uh, Leviticus that says, Asher tikriu otam bemoadam. Three times, the same expression, you. And the word otam means you, them, them, it's missing the letter Vav. See, in the, in the Bible, there is full letters and missing letters. Chaser vemale. There is letter, there is in Hebrew words you can write, you know, there is certain letters who are a vow in Hebrew. They're not, they're not uh, like in English. But sometimes you can miss the vow in English. The same thing is in, in Hebrew, you can miss the vow. You can write, um, you can write at Otam, the word Otam is them. Call the holidays, them. You can write Otam, the right way is to write Aleph, Vav, Taf, Mem. Or you can write Aleph, Taf, Mem. In the Torah, in these three cases, it's written Otam without a Vav. 
then he says the word otam could also mean atem, you. Literally, it's not written atem in the Bible. When we read in the synagogue, when you read the Torah, it's written, Shatikir Otam, you should call the holidays. Not talking about you, talking about the holidays. But the word Otam, if you take out the Vav, could also mean Atem, you. It says in the three times that the Torah speaks about calling up the holidays, about announcing the holidays, it's written at Otam without a Vav. Then you can read three times the word Atem, 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 you, you, you. What does this mean? Here's what Rabbi Akiva came up with. These three occurrences indicate the festivals that you, Beidin, declare through your designation of Rosh Chodesh are valid, even if you choose the wrong date for Rosh Chodesh in error. The festivals that you declare are valid, even if you, even if you choose the wrong mm-hmm. date for Rosh Chodesh deliberately. The festivals that you declare are valid, even if you were misled into choosing the wrong date for Rosh Chodesh. Okay, he told them like this. Atem afilu shogegim, you even if you made a mistake, you even if you did it deliberately, for whatever reason you decided to change it, and you even if somebody else misled you, if the, the witnesses came and misled you, whatever the reason is, it's up to you. That if you announce it's Rosh Chodesh, it's Rosh Chodesh. Not only if the baby, if Rabban Gamliel made a mistake, Let's say this guy, whatever reason, I didn't, went to Mishu Geis and he said, he decided, no, Rosh Chodesh is today finished. Because you said tomorrow, I say today. I'm the boss. And it's, he deliberately did it. What's going on here? What a chutzpah. Hashem says, you, even if it's deliberately. Why it's written three times, you. You, even if you made a mistake, you, even if you made a deliberate mis- uh, um, uh, judgment the wrong way, and you, even if you were led by other people, you didn't make a mistake, and you and you didn't want you were, you wanted to do the honest way, but you, some somehow somebody mixed you up. It's still Rosh Chodesh. Whatever it is, whenever it was decided by the Beitin, by the Nasi, too bad. This is the day. Okay. Does that allow the, the rabbis to overrule the Torah, or does it allow them to interpret the Torah? The Torah gave them the power. It's not overruled. The Torah gave them, in these two days, they have, they have the lesion, they have the space. Or this way or this way. It could be the Terry day, Rosh Chodesh, or it could be the, the, the Terry day, basically. The month could be only 29 days or 30 days. No matter how you slice it, that's it's one day, two days lesion. So there's really no mistake. God gave them the power. So it's not that. Even if God gives them the power to override the Torah, there is such things. Give me an example where they override the Torah. There have been times where some prophets have said for one day... Not that only now, in reality. Today. On... Um, well, with the love and the petro, yeah, you yeah. can't carry... Yeah, 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 yeah. Why only the lulav? What's it is with the shofar, for the example? Shofar, shofar. shofar that happens... To, uh, and we have to blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. What happens to be on Rosh Hashanah? It happens to be on Shabbat. That the rabbi said, because you can, you might carry that in in, in the in public domain. You shouldn't burn the shofar. The rabbi is overruling the Torah. It happens every day. That's a fact. We have two days yontif, right? In the diaspora. The last day of Sukkot. In Israel, it's a regular day, right? In a regular day, you put on film. It's a biblical mitzvah. Here we don't. The whole idea of a today yontef is a rabbinic thing, and only because it's a continuing tradition, and because now we already know. Now we don't have the confusion, we don't know when is Yom Toi Yontev, when is Rosh Chodesh. All of this is gone, we have a calendar. We still go to the Yontev, right? That we overwrite every day. This happens. That God gave, yeah, the rabbis gave the power to do it. There's explanations and reasons, you know. But this is, that's the bottom line. And yeah, absolutely. If the, if the same God who said you should put on film said you should listen to the rabbis, and when they tell you no, then, then this is the way to go. Or they tell you not to blow the shofar, you don't blow the shofar. That's the same Hashem who wants the mitzvah to be done. It's whatever Hashem wants. If He wants this to do, we'll do this. If He wants this to do, we'll do this. 
So he delegates his authority, basically. Exactly, big time. But doesn't don't take it to don't take it home. <laughs> don't start to do whatever you want. <laughs> it doesn't work like this. Then today's rabbis cannot override the law. No, it doesn't work like this. When did that stop? Only when the Sanhedrin was in effect. Basically, yeah. I don't think it's something new. After that, it was continuing. No. So in 1700 years, last 1700 years, the rabbis. Oh, no, no. <laughs> there is no no change. No, nobody overrides the law. No, not that I know. <laughs> <laughs> Not anybody who believes in the tradition. Just the opposite. They try to strengthen the law and go even extra. But what did what did you say? Before, like the tradition becomes, uh, you know, shaving the beard or wearing pants. You know, if you're a woman, is that not a tradition? That's not a tradition. Is that a new law? No, that's not a tradition. No, no, no. Well, it's a whole good. different story. Oh, no, we're not getting to it. Okay, it's that's right. nothing to do to you. <laughs> we're not going to it. Okay. Then he told them we are now in underneath in the yeah right here. Uh, and the following words are what uh, Rabbi Yeshua replied to him: Akiva, you have comforted me. You have comforted me. Akiva nichamtani nichamtani. Because he was so disturbed by, by having to violate the Yontef, and he came, or the Akiva came, and dismantled the whole, the whole bomb. Told me, you comfort me, you have comfort me. Because that's what Hashem wants. If Hashem wants to listen to Rabban Gamliel, that, that's, that's what it is. It doesn't make a difference. We are here to serve God. Whatever God tells us, that's what you have to do. If the same mitzvah that if somebody is sick and he has to eat on Yom Kippur and the doctor tells him to eat on Yom Kippur, then it's the same mitzvah to listen to the doctor as much as that God tells you to listen to the rabbi and the rabbi tells you to listen to the doctor. And if the doctor tells you that it's dangerous for you not to eat, then you have to eat. My father in the last years of his life, he was sick and he took medication. And every year we needed some rabbi that he respected a lot to call him before Yom Kippur to warn him that he has to eat. Because he didn't want to eat. And it's also a mitzvah to listen. To, the mitzvah is to protect your life and to listen to the rabbis who tell you to listen to the doctor. Whatever the doctor says you that because to be strict and fasting on Yom Kippur, you might be lenient on a bigger mitzvah because protecting your life is even a bigger mitzvah. You understand? You're not allowed to kill yourself. A person is not allowed to 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 do anything like this. Then. Uh, that's the other side. There is a story about why the Ruzhina Rebbe was a, a famous Hasidic Rebbe in 200 years ago. And yet, Bayem in Shul was a guy, a Chabadnik. He stood down by in Shul. Even he was a Ruzhina and he was Chabad. Down in Shul. It happens. And every, this guy had a heart condition. And every year, the Ruzhina, by the break between Musaf and Mincha, is to call him to his room cookies on the table and force him to eat because he knew that this guy and himself are not eat. One year the Ruzhina was very engulfed in his prayers. He forgot. Suddenly he heard, <gasps> screaming there in the back. This Chabanik had a heart attack and died. <laughs> he was so upset. He got sick from it. A year later he passed away. He didn't do anything wrong. Just that what I that what I'm saying that how important is it? Then the point is we are here to serve Hashem. Whatever Hashem wants from us, if this is what Hashem wants from us, that's what you do. Okay, the mission states. Uh, Rabbi Yehoshua came to Rabbi Dosa Ben Orkinos. Orkinos. The Gemara cites a Baraisa that amplifies the principle set forth by Rabbi Dosa Ben Horkinos. Just for your information, a Baraisa is a Mishnah that didn't make it to the Mishnah. <laughs> when Rabbi, the author of the Mishnah, he collected many, many statements, laws, that were taught many Mishnahs, and he decided what will make it to the Mishnah and what will not. <coughs> Baraisa means on the word Bar, Bar means outside. That made it, that's remained left was left outside. And then the Gemara wants to make a point to bring other prices to make a point to prove the Mishnah or disagree with the Mishnah or whatever it is. That's what the price is. Mm -hmm. That to make a point to what, what, what Rabbi Yeshua told Rabbi Rabbi Dosa ben he bought he bought another another price, a, a similar concept. The rabbis taught in a Baraisa 
Why were the names of these elders not specified? So that a person should not say about a member of any particular contemporary court, he is so-and-so uh, like Moses and Aaron, he is so-and-so like Nadav and Avihu, he is so-and-so like Eldad and Maidad? Certainly not. Therefore, it is not incumbent upon me to submit to his authority. By omitting the names of the other judges of Moses based in, the Torah deflects this challenge. For although this particular judge is not of the caliber of Moses, Aaron, or the others whose names are known to us, he might be of the caliber of remaining unnamed elders. That's basically what we mentioned before in the Mishnah, that there is a reason why the Torah did not mention the name of the elders, to make a point. The elders are the elders, no matter how they look like. And furthermore, it states, uh, and Samuel said to the people, Hashem who produced Moses and Aaron, uh, and it states, and Hashem sent y Yerubal and Bedan and Yiftach and Samuel, the Bryce of first. You know what? I'll just do it in short. They basically they compare the, 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 the there were three judges. One was Samson, right? Mm -hmm. And Gideon and Iftach, Jephthah. And there were three judges like Moses, Aaron, and Samuel. And the Talmud says there and there. This is the judges. Whatever you have in your generation, eat it. <laughs> you know why? Because the judges reflecting the people. The way you look, that's how your judge looks. <laughs>